What if there were an A to Z guide on how farmers should market to their customers online? Well, what if I told you there was such a thing? It's a book called Ready Farmer One, and I call it the marketing Bible for farmers. And on today's podcast, I have one of the co-authors, Nina Galli, on the show. We're going to talk about what's inside there, the secrets that she learned from her interviews of successful farmers, and how it can help you become a better marketer. Let's get started. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench, and welcome to the My Digital Farmer Podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it, too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Welcome to episode 179 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I'm your host, Corinna Bench, one of the farmers at Shared Legacy Farm CSA out in Elmer, Ohio. I'm also the founder of MyDigitalFarmer.com, which is all about trying to help other farmers get more confident in their marketing and sales strategy so that you can grow a profitable business. How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the show. A big shout out to all of my regular listeners and new subscribers. If you're new to the podcast, I'm so glad you're here today. Make sure you go and subscribe to the show and check out my first 10 episodes because I made them long ago uh, to be an on-ramp into the marketing lingo. And so if you're kind of looking for a Fundamentals 101, that is a great place to go. Today's podcast is sponsored by Local Line. And Local Line has some exciting news to share. They recently launched Local Pay. Now, Local Pay is the first online payment gateway built for farmers. Think Square, Stripe, Apple Pay, PayPal, but built for farm commerce. Today, paying 2.9% plus 30 cents is a widely accepted cost of online sales. But paying nearly 3% on every order adds up in an already low margin industry. So Local Line built Local Pay to offer fair transaction costs to farmers. Farms who connect Local Pay to their Local Line accounts can now get transaction fees for as low as 2%, 2% guys, plus a 15 cent transaction. At the end of the day, this small change takes 10 minutes and will increase your profit margins by three to 5% per year. Getting connected to Local Pay is easy. All you have to do is have a Local Line account and complete an easy five minute application. Before you know it, you'll be saving hundreds of fees each year. For podcast listeners, Local Line is offering a premium feature for free when you use my coupon code DigitalFarmer2022. Go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash local line to learn more. Terms and conditions apply. For more information, check out the link in my show notes. Farmers, let's rethink online payments. What's up, everyone? Hope you're having a great week so far. We are beginning to slowly wind down our CSA season. I think we have four weeks left to do before we're done. And that means that I am right now in the process of putting together my early bird promotion campaign for my CSA members, trying to get them to renew their share at the end of October. Uh, That's what we've done the last four or five years, and it's worked really well. So I'm in the process of that. I'll let you know how that goes. I've also been busy working on the future of my digital farmer. It's been one of my big projects this fall. I'm working through that with my uh, business coach and just trying to figure out what it is that I can do to help farmers better um, when it comes to marketing. I know that I have an online course called CSA Quick Start, which I will be releasing again here uh, in the winter. But you know, a lot of what I talk about is marketing and I don't really have a pathway for people to dive deeper into that with me. And so I'm trying to figure out what that could look like. So if you filled out that survey for me, um, that was super helpful. Uh, You can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash survey if you haven't done that yet. 
And it just gives me some feedback on what you've appreciated about the show, what you've learned from me, how I've helped you. That helps me know what's working and what I can do more of. So thank you for doing that. Well, let's get to to today's show. I have a guest, Nina Galley from Local Line, and she is the co-author of a book called Ready Farmer One. And this book, you guys, is like the farm marketing Bible for me. I highly recommend it. I think you guys should all go check it out. And I wanted her to come onto the show so that I could help make farmers aware that this resource exists. If you're kind of looking for a manual to go to where you can just open up a chapter on one particular topic of marketing and get a whole lot better at understanding it, this is the book because it is very comprehensive. And in this interview, I get Nina to talk a little bit about how the book came to be, the research that went into it. And she also teases out some of the big picture findings and results that are packed into this giant book. She doesn't give it all away. Uh, We do want you to think about going out and purchasing the book, Um, but it's a really, really strong interview, and I hope you get some ideas out of this. So let me introduce you to Nina. My guest today is Nina Galley. Nina is a writer and interviewer focused on helping farmers gain autonomy by owning their sales channels. As the head of content at Local Line, Nina built the farmer education program there with dozens of videos, guidebooks, articles, and templates, all with the aim of empowering farmers to get online and connect with their customers. In May of 2022, Nina and her co-author, Diego Footer, launched their new book, Ready Farmer One, The Farmer's Guide to Selling and Marketing. From your online store, marketing strategy, and farm operations, this 400-page handbook is filled with farmers' stories on their journey with online sales. Please welcome Nina to the show. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Corinna. It's great to be here. Let's just start out by having you introduce yourself, because I'm not sure everyone knows uh, who you are. Tell my audience a little bit about who you are, some of your background, where you work, and how you're trying to help farmers. Sure, yeah. So um, my name's Nina Galli. I work at Local Line. I'm the head of content there. And Local Line, if you don't already know, um, is the operating system for the family farm. So we help farms with two aspects of their business. So one, how they accept orders. So having hosting their online store, um, their inventory, their price list, everything that a farm would need to be able to accept orders. And then we help help them with everything that comes after that order. Uh, So payments, um, sales data, delivery and pickup, everything that they would need to be able to accept that order and fulfill that order. So that's a bit about local line. my role at Local Line is to help create content to help farmers sell online. So that's everything from ebooks to blog posts to webinars. We have videos, have this whole content hub so that any farm who comes onto Local Line who's looking to sell online and don't really know where to start, uh, they have this good basis to, uh, to get started. This is one of the things that I think is a strong suit for Local Line, by the way, um, before we jump into the interview, because um, so many other e commerce platforms for farmers, I don't feel like they put enough emphasis on this. I remember several years ago when I first started this journey, um, I would actually reach out to some of these people and be like, hey, it would be really awesome if you could like build your tool in such a way that, for instance, like my email service provider could like link with it. And so I could use some of these automation marketing tools that are out there in the big wide world. And they were like, I would actually have people tell me farmers aren't aren't interested in marketing. And it was just like this oh, shutdown. No. And I was like, okay, maybe I should have started in a different way and just been like, can you please help us with learning how to do marketing? <laughs> and I feel like Local Line does that. You're very intentional about trying to just make sure we understand the bigger picture and how it all works. You're not just um, trying to sell us the tool, but you're trying to teach us how to fish <laughs> as well, right? Of course, so yeah, it's, yeah. It's I a mean... beautiful thing. So um, super good at it. Um, Yeah, big kudos to you. So I actually have you on the podcast for a very specific reason, because you and Diego Footer, who is also a fellow podcaster, um, recently launched 
this amazing book called Ready Farmer One. And congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> as, the, as the author, as the co-author of that. Um, it is really good. And I, for me, it's kind of like the marketing Bible for farmers. And I want to encourage all of you who are listening right now to, to just check it out. I, I think it's actually extraordinary. Um, and I wanted to have you on the show to make sure that it got its very own episode so that farmers would find out about, about it. Um, so can you tell my audience kind of in a nutshell what this book that you wrote is all about and what it's designed to do since we're gonna kind of dive into some details about that in today's show. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, so the book is called Ready Farmer One, The Farmer's Guide to Selling and Marketing. And it's essentially that. So it's an A to Z guide on how farmers should market and sell to their customers. So we took a very like a focus on selling online. So uh, looking at all the aspects that would go into, so how do you set up your online store? How do you create that website? How do you get customers there? How do you find your customers? How do you fulfill those orders? So it's really everything that a farmer would need to know uh, to get started, but also it's also created for the farmer who's you know already been selling online for a few years and maybe looking to grow their business or you know are a bit in um, they're looking for new methods to market and stuff. So it's it's pretty much this just this guide that has everything you would need to know um, from A to Z. How many pages is this book? <laughs> it is all over 400 pages. So okay, so I expensive. wanted you to say that. Yeah, I wanted you to say that because this isn't just some little like 100 page guide, you know, that you can like, oh, it's this overview of marketing. This is a serious tome. Like it has got so much good stuff in it. Uh, a chapter for like anything you can think of which I love. That's why I call it the marketing Bible. What inspired you to, to write this book, Nina? I mean, did you just always have a book in you or, or did you start to see a problem as you were working at Local Line? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, I love writing about this content. That's what I've been doing the last four years at Local Line. And I, I always did see it as a book. I think, um, I think there was a need out there for like a curated resource that really covers all of these things, these aspects that farmers are kind of expected to know when they start um, selling online. So, you know, like your website, like your online store, right? There's all of these aspects and knowing where to start can be a bit overwhelming. So I really wanted to create this resource that farmer could pick up at any point in their business and they can really just go to that chapter. Hey, I want to learn more about my website or, Hey, I want to learn more about email marketing and they can just flip through it and go there. And so that was kind of the goal going in was, can we create this resource as we went more and more and more? Um, it just kept growing. <laughs> it just kept getting bigger. Uh, so first we're like, maybe it'll just be an extensive ebook. Um, but now it's this full blown published piece of you know literature yeah, yeah. let's say um and uh yeah yeah so that was kind of where it came from and the more we researched for the book too we noticed that there wasn't really anything out there so if you look at what farming books are available there is a lot on you know how to farm let's say how to increase your yield how to start an urban uh farm how to start a market garden whatever the topic is right there's a lot of knowledge on on how to actually farm um, but there's not a lot on, on how to run your farming business and how to be an independent farming entrepreneur. Um, and that is really the goal of Ready Farmer One. It's to put that out there so that farmers do have access to that. Oh, that's really resonating with me. I find that to be true too, even on the conference circuit too, um, when you try to find speakers or workshops on, on topics of marketing and sales or business in general, there isn't as much mm -hmm. out there. Um, and I wonder sometimes this was our experience where we, we went into farming because we loved growing things and we wanted to just grow things for people, but we didn't necessarily have the training and we knew how to do that really well, but we didn't have the training on how to actually run a successful business. Like all those things you mm -hmm. learn in business school, all those things you learn about sales and marketing, which are an important part of having a successful business. Those aren't skill sets that I think a lot of farmers have ever been exposed to. And when you try to go out and learn them in some of the normal places that farmers go, it's difficult to, to find. Uh, so it's such a, it was a huge hole, a big vacuum in the space that, that it's definitely filled. I, and I think it's a really strong contribution to that space. 
How did this partnership with Diego come about? With Local Line, we, we quickly learned that farmers talk to farmers, right? That's how um, communities are formed, how knowledge is shared. And we found that there were, you know, like yourself, Corinna, that there were people in this industry that had just a bigger net to share what they um, had learned and their experiences and share other farmers' stories with their platforms. And so same with Diego, you know, he has that, that audience. And so we connected about, you know, maybe doing some content together, some work together, and uh, that quickly turned into, hey, let's, let's write a book together. Um, so Diego was, was a great partner for it just because of his podcasting experience. So he's really good at interviewing. He has a lot of connections. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of how it, how it started. And, and again, like it wasn't, we didn't set out first to write a book together. It just kind of, kind of happened that way. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a very valuable partnership, um, in that way. So what was the premise that you were actually working from when you started with this idea, because I'm, and maybe you don't start mm -hmm. with a premise, but I'm just assuming that you walk into a project like this with this assumption, some kind of an assumption um, about before, before you get started, like, what are you trying to prove something or are you trying to debunk something? Are you trying to find a framework uh, that you believe there was a framework? Like what was, what were some of those premises that you were walking in with? Yeah. Um, I think the, the main premise we wanted to debunk um, is whether these conventional marketing strategies that you um, learn about in business school or you read about online, um, whether they also apply to farmers and whether farmers who are succeeding are using them or what are they using, you know? Um, so that was a huge part of our book. So um, before we started writing the book, we interviewed over 30 farmers, um, producers, some market managers, uh, influential people in, in this space to learn about, you know, how did you start your business? What do you do to succeed? Do you use online sales? How did you get to where you are? Kind of understanding what their journey was with sales and marketing in the business. And after we did a few of those interviews, we kind of compared, okay, what are those conventional marketing strategies that we read about and that we learn about? And what did those look like to a farmer and, and kind of are there connections there? So that was the, a big part. We really wanted to, we didn't want to be the ones saying you need to do A to Z and you'll be successful. And again, we don't say that Ready Farmer One is like a manual A to B of here's how to be successful. Uh, it's a collection of themes, of concepts, of skills, of ideas from other farmers um, to be able to, you know, apply to your own business. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I guess the premise kind of grew. It started with what would a farmer need to do to be successful to sell online? What are current farmers doing to be successful online? And can we curate those into some kind of form of content that's digestible and uh, you know, easy to read and most importantly, actionable. I think that's a huge theme in Ready Farmer One is yeah. that everything is very action driven. You know, here's a bit of theory. Here's an example of someone who does it and here's what you can apply or can try to apply or inspire. Yeah. You here's a template. In yeah, yeah. Exactly. In fact, you have sections. I don't know if it's on every, at the end of every chapter, but you have these little, like go to this link and we have actual templates for you to look at, which is so awesome um, to give exactly. a kind of a done for you pattern that someone can to, can look at and say, oh, that's what you mean when you say, you know, here's what a, a good product label looks like or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I think often uh, when people talk about marketing, it can feel really top level, feel really abstract, really like oh, I don't know what that would look like in practice. That sounds really nice, but like, mm -hmm. how do I even? So yeah, so that was a big aim too of Ready Farmer of One. Of We have that resources hub that you mentioned, so you can take a QR code and it'll send you and there's some templates. Um, but also I think really hearing those stories of how people do it in their business really helps yeah. to be able to visualize what that would look like in yours. Yeah, that is so smart that you... Well, let's talk a little bit about this research that you did before the book. Sure. Now, was that yeah. always the plan that you were going to do that be before you started writing that this was how you were going to create the core content? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so for those of you who are listening, one of the, one of the really neat parts of the books, actually, this is probably my favorite part of the book is that you do scatter throughout 
each, each of the chapters kind of has like a featured farm that uh, tells their story and you, I'm, it's kind of sounds like you literally lifted the, the script or the um, the actual what's that called <laughs> the transcript the yeah. transcript thank you you lifted the transcript right out of the when you were interviewing people uh, but you can actually hear from the words of these farmers like this is what we did this is what we've learned and I love to hear and, and the farms are very different too so you see the patterns um, as you're as you're going through them and I and it makes that particular topic that you talk about in that chapter very relevant and, and actionable because you can see how it how did they turn this practical how did they turn this into real life how does this have legs in a business today's podcast is sponsored by my online class early bird campaigns that convert are you a csa farmer like me that wants as many of their customers as possible to renew their shares early this is the time in the season when I begin to put together my promotion plan for how to get my current CSA members to sign up for next year. I'm actually going to launch it in a couple of weeks. Now, if you would like to learn my framework and process that I've been using for the last five years that's gotten us wicked results, last year we had 93% of them renew in three days, then I want to invite you to go check out my online class, Early Bird Campaigns That Convert, where I literally spell out the entire framework for you. And within just a few weeks, you'll have your own Early Bird promotion ready to go and ready to launch and see what happens. To learn more, go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash early bird and check it out. And now back to the show. So let's talk a little bit more about the research element of this book, Ready Farmer One, um, because it's so, so, so strong. It's actually one of the, my favorite parts of this book. For those of you who are listening, um, almost every chapter, I think every chapter has like a featured story of a farmer that you've interviewed. And it's almost like you've lifted the transcript of the interview and put it right in there. And it has alignment with whatever that topic was for that chapter. And I love it because you can really see and how does this one farm, this one successful farm, take that concept and put it into action? It really puts some legs on it and helps me see as a farmer, oh, this is what it could look like. So how did you decide, um, I guess, who were these farmers that you were going to research? Um, and you know, how did you decide that they were quote unquote successful? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we really wanted to represent a wide range of different businesses. Um, so we kind of categorized, okay, what, what do we define as that wide range? Uh, and we looked within our own network. So uh, through local line are the farmers that use local line who have grown their businesses, who have, um, you know, high revenue at each year, who have, are succeeding with online sales. Um, we kind of bucketed those into these different categories. And then similar with Diego through his podcasting experience, he looked at his network um, at farms that he'd interviewed before or friends and kind of bucketed those as well. So we wanted to be able to make sure that we were representing the wide range of farmers um, in this book. And then we, in terms of what success looks like, I, I think it really depends on their business goals. So was their goal to double their customer base in X amount of time? Or was their goal to have a very solid customer base that comes back each year? Or was it to sell at CSA shares? Or, or however they define success um, in their own um, business is kind of how we bucketed. Yeah. And then we just started doing interviews. And we looked at what are common themes people are saying? Uh, what are common marketing methods, sales methods that, that people are using? Um, and do we feel like the wide range of what we define as customers, or sorry, as farmers is being represented in these interviews? And if it wasn't, then we went back to the drawing board and say, oh, we're kind of missing people in this category or in this category and uh, went out to our networks again and kind of started again, Yeah, if that makes sense. Now, did you have a a certain list of, I guess, pillars 
of content that you were actually trying to find, like, oh, I sure hope somebody brings up email marketing <laughs> or, um, I mean, so you kind of had a premise, like and a framework of things you knew were important. And then you were listening to these interviews and you were hearing some of those things being lifted up, I assume, is that correct? And kind of- Exactly, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we started writing anything, we created a book outline and we're like, oh, for sure we wanna talk about your website, we wanna talk about setting up your online store, we wanna talk about email marketing, whatever those topics were. And so we started with that and that's kind of where we where we thought that people would be bucketed in. Sometimes yeah. we were right, sometimes we were wrong. Sometimes there was entire topics that we hadn't, we didn't have at all in our outline that people were bringing up. And that's mm -hmm. kind of how we started it. And then we kind of adapted as we collected more and more stories. Yeah, so let's let's talk about like what you found out. Cause I think that for me is the most interesting part of this interview. Um, you are perfectly positioned in some ways as a, <laughs> as a software service to, how many farms are you guys serving as local line? Uh, we as surpassed 10,000. I think yeah. we're around 12. Okay. So yeah. that's just insanity yeah. right there. Like yeah. that's 10,000 case studies that you guys get to kind of look at behind the scenes. If you really wanted to, you could be able to see their, mm -hmm. you know, how they're doing, how they're performing. And you, I'm sure that you can see patterns. And so that you are the perfect kind of person to be able to see the red thread that's running through all of this. So when you were doing this research, you came in with this framework, you came in with this idea, this is what I think people will say, like, mm -hmm. what was what was corroborated for you uh, as an author? Like, um, what were you hearing that was validating? What are the things that matter? I guess, like, if I'm a farmer listening to this podcast, I want you to give me like, I, well, everyone just needs to go to buy the book if you want to get the whole thing. But like, what of is course, the yeah. essence? Like, what is, what are the one or two things that people kept bringing up? You're like, oh my gosh, this is so fundamental. Uh, maybe you could mm -hmm. start with that. And then I also want to ask, like, give me an example of one thing that surprised you that you weren't expecting to hear about. That would kind of be fun too. But what are those core principles and fundamentals that really need to be there? Yeah, for sure. So the last chapter of the book is actually titled uh, Lessons Learned from 10,000 Farmers Online. Yes, it's um, so good. Online. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we really tried to distill kind of what we, um, what we learned from the interviews and what constantly came up because uh, someone's specific marketing methods might change slightly depending on their goals, but um, I can go through those lessons. That might be kind of a good. Well, place don't go through start. all of them because we want people okay. to get the book, but maybe you can highlight <laughs> like um, a few of them. How about that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll start with the biggest one. And this is, uh, I think also had very much to do with, with COVID and how things change, but it's diversify your sales channels. So we heard from a lot of farmers who um, were succeeding that they had multiple sales channels that they were selling to. So they had um, always seemed to have an online store that was direct to consumer. So just a retail store where they could, you know, direct consumers. And then some of them were doing some wholesale, a CSA. Um, and it was really having this, okay, if one sales channel fails for me, do I have somewhere else to pivot to? Mm -hmm. um, so that was a common theme we were seeing that um, was really important because you could kind of adapt depending on, um, you know, a global pandemic, for example, yeah. or uh, a restaurant closed or, you know, having these, these different places to be able to um, funnel your product you know, pivot too. to. Yeah. And funnel exactly. your product because you grow all the stuff or you make all this product. Sometimes you don't quite have enough over in this outlet to get rid of it. And you can kind of like, oh, I've got an overflow. I've got this place over here that'll take the rest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that was a very common theme. Um, another one that at Local Line we're very passionate about, but was also a common theme is really looking at your data. So making data driven decisions about your marketing, about your sales channels, about your product offering, all of these aspects of your business, all these places where you have to make decisions, make sure they're backed up by some kind of data that you're collecting. So for example, uh, for uh, your marketing strategies, you're putting a lot of time into social media. Are you actually seeing conversions come in from social media or are they coming in through your e email newsletter or are they coming in person? So actually being able to know I'm putting all this effort into one thing, is it actually working and, and how well is it working for me and can I adapt uh, there? So that was a very interesting thing too, because I think sometimes data can seem overwhelming and it can seem yeah. kind of scary to dive into or, oh, I'll do that later. But it, but it was a very clear trend from the farmers that were succeeding that this was a big part of their um, process each year on deciding where they were gonna go. 
Yeah. And I think a lot of farmers are scared of technology or I don't even know if it's, Mm -hmm. it's part of its fear, but part of it's just like, I literally don't know how to do this and I don't have time to figure it out. And I don't know who to ask to help me. Yeah, <laughs> figure it no, out, and sure. then they don't even know what yeah. data they're supposed to look at um, to mm-hmm. be helpful. Because again, this is a business school thing. Like, I just sure. showed up yeah. to like grow the product, right? That's what many farmers, I think, are are thinking, and they don't realize that oh, there's actually these other things that are gonna that I kind of need to know a little bit about if I want to actually be profitable. So I totally agree, and I used to absolutely be in that camp where I was I was not looking at data. I was just hoping, throwing things against the wall and hoping it worked, um, which is no, not, sure. not an efficient use of time. I love that one. What's, mm-hmm. an, what's another kind of theme that you saw again and again? Yeah, um, the final one that we end with is, and it's very straightforward and simple, um, but it's make it easy for customers to buy from you. Because mm. um, sometimes the sales process can be convoluted for a customer. Um, and they have to either phone call here or they have to uh, get sent an email or a, like a product list and then they have to send back, I want this, but then that's already sold out or, or whatever these complicated process can be. Um, it can often deter someone from actually following through. Um, so I think just making it easy for customers to purchase from you, having one avenue where those orders come in, um, having that clear, having instructions, having the expectations clear for the customer how to get there can really help get you more sales, even yeah. though it seems like such an easy thing uh, yeah. to change. So that was, that was one as well. Oh, preach it. I see this in so many, in so many ways and we're not perfect at this yet either. Um, we mm-hmm. have a, a, in times, I think it's complicated to become a part of our CSA. It's not always very clear. Um, but yeah, even things like I can't, sometimes when I audit websites for farmers, I can't, I can't find a clear buy now, like the mm-hmm. button, like the call to action button yeah. changes. It's always different. And I'm like, where is the button to click to buy the product? You know, it can be as simple yeah. as that or, yeah. or not knowing before I click the buy now button, not knowing exactly what's going to happen when I click on this, like, what is the process for That's true. Um, yeah. picking up this product? How is that workflow going to go? Yeah. So that's a super good one. Well, the, there's a whole list of them in this book, Ready Farmer Ones. And like she said, it's at the end of the book. And I feel like that's a really powerful part of, of the book itself. What was something that you discovered along the way that you weren't expecting to hear that you found kind of surprising? Um, I think there is a conception and this is also kind of in conversations that I've had outside of the book as well but there's a perception that uh, selling online is a lot more work than not selling online Um, and I find this an interesting concept because obviously as the software we're like oh no it's it's so much easier Um, and it is a big adjustment. There are a lot of steps that in process that a farm goes through. I'm sure you guys have experienced the same thing from not selling online to selling online, like thinking about packing and thinking about how you're going to take those orders from your online system and pack them. And what I found really interesting through these interviews in the book is really distilling what that workflow change is and what it looks like and how to become efficient there. Um, and really kind of debunking what that looks like for farmers who maybe have this preconception of it's a lot more work or I'm stressed or I don't know what that would look like. Um, and I think that's a really interesting perspective of Ready Farmer One too, that's maybe outside of this, it's within sales and marketing, but a bit different, right? It's like, what does that process on the farm look like for me to be able to pack all my orders and get them out and, and organize that? Um, and I think that's a very interesting yeah, lessons learned and hearing the farms that we did interview, like learning how they did that and how, yeah. um, like even how they, you know, uh, pack their truck to get the orders to the pickup location, things like that. I think that was for me very interesting uh, to learn. And I think hopefully very helpful to farms who don't sell online um, yeah. to get some of those ideas there. Yeah. So they don't make the same mistakes. <laughs> yeah, that um, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. too. Uh, I, this makes me, what's coming up for me when you say that is, uh, anytime you learn a new skill, there is a initial resistance, uh, either it's, you know, I don't know how to do that. This is hard. 
trying to figure out the new workflow, the new, and it does take, it takes too long. It feels like it's taking too long, but just like any new skill, um, once you learn it, once you kind of push through that wall and learn it now, it's actually faster than it was before you got started, but you don't sense that when you're first starting because you're going through the learning curve and learning curves by their nature are slow and inefficient mm -hmm. and awkward. And you do fall into potholes and you make mistakes and you kind of have to, in order to figure out, you know, the, the most efficient way to do it. So um, I, I'm sure that everyone, you know, that, that has a local line business or so everyone that you interview probably had that happen to them as they were sure. trying to overcome that initial, like, oh, okay, I've got to make this new workflow and figure out how to do this online sales thing. So I guess what I'm bringing up to my audience is that if you're in that place and you're not sure you want to jump in there and you're feeling that resistance, like just know that's normal and every single farmer felt it and you will have to go through that. But it, it is a totally different picture on the other side once you, once you go through the learning curve. Definitely, definitely, yeah. All right. Um, what are you hoping is going to happen to farmers who read this book? Um, I hope it debunks a lot of stuff. I hope it, um, I don't know. I think marketing, even as a non-farmer, I think marketing seems really intimidating. I think there is, it feels like it's this black box sometimes, you know, especially when we're going down social media, the algorithm, like what even is that? Or, you know, I think there's just, it feels like there's a lot of moving parts. And I think if you haven't really dove into it yet, it can be really intimidating and scary. Yeah. And I really hope that this book helps give some relief. <laughs> um, you know, it, it helps helps people understand what are these different aspects, gives them some ideas, and also helps them realize that they don't have to do everything. Um, that is not the point of Ready Farmer One. It's not telling you to do every single thing that we wrote about in the book. Um, it's just to help you pick and choose what works for you, play around, learn a little, read another farmer's story, you know, all these farmers too, I'm sure would be more than welcome, uh, more than open to connect. Um, so, you know, they're all very active on social media. So I'm sure you could reach out and connect with them and ask them more in depth. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think what I really hope with Ready Farmer One is that, is that it really helps relay that information and make it accessible. Um, and I hope it inspires some people to, to get their hands dirty, you know, yeah, try just take something. action. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are so many like tips here, questions to ask yourself, yeah. you're just a checklist, anything like that. Um, so pick one one day and just play a little, try it out, mm -hmm. see if it works, check the data to mm -hmm. see if it is. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I think yeah. That's, uh, it's that's full really of hope. a bunch of what I call quick wins. You know, where you just mm -hmm. try that and boom, you see a, a, an immediate uh, response or, or reaction, um, as well as the bigger framework. Like if you want to, you know, build a long term uh, process, like here's the framework for that, too. Let's talk a little bit about how you coach your readers to use the book a certain way in the introduction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, farmers are very busy people. Um, I've learned that <laughs> and uh, I don't I don't want anyone to feel the expectation that they had to read this 400 page book in one sitting to get value out of it. Um, Ready Farmer One is really meant for it's very clearly organized in the table of contents. We, we call the table of contents your best friend. Uh, so if there is a certain topic in there, for example, um, let's just see what some of the chapter titles are like. Uh, identify a farm sales model or create a farm brand or build a successful farm website. If there's something in there that you're like, yep, I need to do that today. Just jump to that chapter, read, um, get out, get from it what you need and, and start actioning. Um, so that's kind of how we, we encourage people to use Ready Farmer One. It's just uh, you have some downtime to, to spend on your sales and marketing pick up the book, pick a chapter and, and get to work. Um, and don't feel like you have to read it from A to Z to get value from it. Um, of course, hopefully over time, you do get through the whole thing. Um, and, but yeah, that was, that was kind of the, the idea. And we really did want to make it a very multimedia book. So there are QR codes throughout that send you to the resources hub. Uh, Diego also released a podcast called Carrot Cashflow, where 
a lot direct interviews that we used in the book. The episodes are now out as well, and he's continuing to interview more and more farmers. Um, so, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a start of what we call a, a community of of getting mm. um, getting farm more farmers um, excited and, yeah. and into sales and marketing. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a great vision right there. Getting more farmers excited about sales and marketing. What if that could be the case? That's no, my new exactly. t-shirt right there. That's my new t-shirt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so this was a question that my kids wanted me to ask you mm -hmm. because, and I'm kind of curious too. Tell me what is the title, where did you get the title for this book? Because we are trying to figure out what, where, where it came from, what it means. Ready yeah. Farmer One. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Um, so it's a play on the book and movie Ready Player One, uh, which I can't remember the author of the original book, um, but I know Steven Spielberg, I think, inter or, uh, directed the movie. And so the entire premise of the story is um, it's about a young boy in a reality where the majority is a virtual reality. So they spend the majority of their time in this virtual reality world um, where they do competitions and stuff. And so it's a play on that because we're essentially okay. asking farmers to join this digital, um, not to the extreme of where we're all in the metaverse, let's say, but um, yeah. Going so into a, a new on, world. A on that. Yeah. Exactly. We're, we're going into this new digital world and, um, and we also thought it had a nice ring to it. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps people guessing. So yeah. I yeah, love it. So I love it. I okay. Well, I haven't seen that movie. So now I'm going to go watch that movie and it's all going to be <laughs> clear to me. So I love that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how does Local Line feel about this book? Like, were they, was this actually like Local Line's idea? Like, we should try to write a book. Um, and I guess I'm kind of wondering, like, how does this book fit into the mission mm -hmm. of Local Line? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at Local Line, we really want farmers to succeed in their businesses. That's kind of the overall arching goal of our company. Um, and we've had so many conversations with customers over the years that, okay, we have this online platform, um, but where do we go from here? How do yeah. we find our customers? How do we grow our businesses? How do I market? I've never done this before. Um, and we really wanted, you know, Ready Farmer One is that resource to be able to give them, hey, you know, welcome. <laughs> and uh, and here is, here's a resource to help you get started to answer some of those questions that you have. Um, and so we really think that Ready Farmer One does fit well into the mission of, of what we're trying to do. And we're really excited that we were able to take the time to be able to offer this. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's just the beginning, I guess, of, of what we, uh, we hope to accomplish. But um, yeah, we really hope it, the goal of it is to be helpful. So <laughs> yeah, I hope that it, uh, yeah. Oh, this, this goes back to what I said earlier, you know, like you, you guys are, you cannot just give farmers a tool and say, okay, go figure it out. Like farmers don't actually just need the software tool. They need, they need help learning how to sell and all the things that come with that. And so um, that's what this book is so good at. And that's what Local Line is so committed to. I love all the webinars. You guys provide a lot of different resources. You want to just real quick tell people where they can locate that on, on uh, your yeah. website? Yeah, for sure. So um, if you're on just the local line website in the header, we have a resources tab uh, where you can find our blog. We have past webinars and any upcoming webinars will be in there as well. Uh, we have some video content. We have uh, all of you download like ebooks. Um, yeah, so essentially it lives all in there and a very it's very varied. So mm -hmm. um, so depending on kind of if you're looking for more like operational help, um, more very specific to local line help. Oh, how do I, you know, do this in the platform uh, to more kind of that sales and marketing. Um, there's pretty much every something for everyone there. So I'd really uh, rec recommend to go out there. So it's uh, site.localline.ca slash resources is where everyone can find that. Okay, I'll make sure I put that that link in the show notes. But even if you're not sure. a customer of local line, mm -hmm. and even if you know, you never will be like local line is just a great resource to go to and, and just learn how to do some marketing. Um, it's one of the reasons sure. I partner with you guys because I'm really passionate about teaching that skill to farmers. So um, just go there and make use of what they have to teach. You guys have a really good guide called How to Sell on Instagram as a Farmer, which I absolutely love. And it's such a step-by-step -step 
I'm just going to lift that one up right now. Go, go download that one, guys. It's really, really good. Um, but they're, yeah. your, your webinars, I think, do a good job, too, of inviting guests onto the show and really teasing out certain topics and helping farmers just think differently about things. So um, super, sure. super good stuff there. Um, what's next for Local Line? I know you guys have had some pretty big updates. You, you rolled out 2.0 this past year. If you want to do it, there's so much in 2.0. I know you can't talk about it all, but like, <laughs> um, just kind of share some of what's been happening over the last year at Local Line. Uh, yeah, so so as you mentioned, we launched 2.0 this year, which is really exciting. So we revamped our existing platform into something new, fresh, has a lot more features that a lot of our customers were asking for. So that's really exciting. Uh, we also launched Local Pay, which is uh, Local Line's own payment gateway. So if you think about Stripe or Square, uh, it's essentially that, but it's much lower transaction rates. So those generic uh, payment gateways. So for credit card processing, uh, I believe they ask about 2.9% plus 15 cents per transaction. I think that's the average industry average. Um, but with local pay, we want to offer uh, our customers much lower transaction fees. So I think the, um, depending on what plan you're at with local line, uh, you can get as low as 2% per transaction plus 10 cents. Um, so that's much lower. That so that can up. save farmers so much money, um, which is really important because a big part of selling online is obviously accepting online payments. Uh, so that's really exciting. We also launched internationally. Uh, so predominantly we were in Canada and the United States, uh, but now we're also available in the rest of the Anglosphere. So Australia, New Zealand, the UK and Ireland, which is also very exciting. So yeah, so big things at Local Line. Um, we have some very exciting product feature launches coming soon but I'll, yeah and a lot of them yeah, are based on so. feedback from the farmers and in fact I remember emailing somebody on the team and I had just run a report um in the report center trying to look at some of my data and I wrote back and I was like hey is there any way you can have like a quick little snapshot picture to show me how many new customers I'm actually acquiring brand new people who just you know found out about my store and joined the store and because I actually would really like to track that information and that's not easy to track. And so you guys, they wrote back and they're like, that's a really good idea. Let me talk to the uh, software developers about that. And like two weeks later, it was on the report. I'm like, who are you people? Like, <laughs> I was yeah, just giving no, you an idea yeah. and I, you know, but this happens all the time. You know, they just, I don't know how many people you guys have on your team, but they're, <laughs> you're really responsive um, to, you don't answer every single request, but you answer quite a few of them that I've made. It's pretty cool. So. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you guys know the product best, right? You're, you're yeah. the ones using it every day. So yeah, no, very important yeah. part of our business. Well, for those of you who don't know a lot about Local Line or you're interested in learning more about um, Local Line as a software service for your, getting your online store set up and just being the operating system for your farm, just I will put the link in the show notes. You can go to localline.com. CA, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Um, but I have an affiliate link that you can also uh, follow that rabbit trail. I'll put that in the show notes as well. I think it's mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash local line. We'll, we'll take you to that affiliate link. Um, the book is called Ready Farmer One. Where can people go to get this book? Yeah, so you can visit our uh, our landing page at readyfarmer1.com and it'll tell you more about the book and it'll have all the links to buy it or you can just search it on Amazon. Um, so it's available in most Amazon marketplaces around the world, which is exciting. So good old yeah. Amazon. You can always count on Amazon. <laughs> well, this has been so good. Thank you for taking this hour of time with me today and uh, talking all about your beautiful creation. How How do you feel about your book? Are you proud of it? I know as I, an uh, author, I, as an uh, author, it's got to be like <laughs> this <laughs> crazy process. Yeah, no, it was uh, getting the first physical copy. I have it here as well um, for the first time was was such a great feeling. So I'm, I'm very proud of it. And um, I am also always welcome to any feedback anyone yeah. has. So uh, so reach out and let us know what you think. Yeah, go leave a review for the book. That would be good. Yeah, and, uh, that would on, also be very helpful. Yeah, I'm sure you would probably love that. Amazon loves that too. Well, one of these days, if we meet Nina, I'm going to bring my book so you can sign it. <laughs> I can have an autograph <laughs> <Sounds copy. great. laughs> Um Well, thanks again for uh, just sharing all of this with my audience and um, have a wonderful uh, rest of the fall. I know you're going to kind of launch this book again out into the big wide world here. 
and I want to encourage everyone to go get yourself a copy and start perusing it this this coming winter just use it like she recommends don't feel like you have to start at the beginning um, follow whatever interests you it's designed to be read that way and I think you're gonna you're definitely going to find one or two super fast things you can do and if you take the time to read the whole thing you're going to get a really good overview of what the key pillars of marketing need to be to help you grow a profitable business so thanks Nina for being with us thanks so much Karina it's great to be here well I hope you enjoyed that interview with Nina a uh, super, super good book, you guys. I can't recommend it enough. I think every farmer should own a copy and tell your friends about it and let me know what you think of it. Today's show notes can be found at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 179. And we definitely dropped a lot of resources into that one. If you like today's episode, please go leave me a rating or a review or tell someone who needs to hear about today's message about this podcast to go check it out. If you want to get onto my email list, make sure you subscribe. Um, I have some free stuff to send your way that's going to make you a better marketer. It's like three months of a weekly email. It's going to walk you through the uh, marketing jungle. So you can grab that at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe. Don't forget, I am now on Instagram at mydigitalfarmer. I show up there a few times a week with a marketing tip and mindset coaching moment to help keep you in track on your business. I would love to connect with you there. Thanks for joining me today, you guys. Have a great week. I believe in you.